primary school student in Canada about green energy and a couple of answers will inevitably come up. Solar, tidal and geothermal power are all well-known alternatives to our current coal belching power plants, but the most popular answer will undoubtedly be wind power, and that's regardless of whether you're asking kids in school or adults on the street. And that makes sense. Humans have always been fascinated by the fantastic power of wind. For thousands of years we've written legends about gods that control it, told horror stories of the mighty storms it summons, and we've even attempted to mimic flight by capturing it in the sails of our ships and the wings of our air machines. So the next step is to logically use wind power for a modern civilization. But you may say, where does wind even come from? How is it used? Is it really as terrible as bird activists say it to be? Well, wind is a natural source with multiple factors being involved. The sun's uneven heating of the atmosphere, that causes wind. The different in the Earth's surfaces, that causes wind, and well as Earth's overall rotation, which as you can guess, also causes wind. Though that's not all. The area we live in like mountains, bodies of water, and vegetation also affect wind flow patterns. That's really why some places have more wind than others, and why those certain places are best suited for wind power. Let's really get into what wind energy is. In short, it's a form of solar energy. Wind energy is defined by being the process by which wind produces power or energy. It gives variable power which is very consistent from year to year, but it does have some variation over short periods. There needs to be a minimum of 10 kilometers per hour of wind blowing at all times. To make it a reliable source that can be counted on year round, other energy sources like solar are used in conjunction to fill the gaps. The wind turbines convert kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical power. That generator can then convert mechanical power into electricity. The turbines convert the energy in wind to electricity by rotating propeller-like blades around a rotor. The rotor turns the shaft, which turns the electric generator. Now the first time that humans began using wind power to generate energy for our use was in July of 1887 in Scotland. Professor James Blythe of Anderson's College. He built a clothed sail turbine that was nearly 10 meters high and used it to power the electrical lighting in his home, effectively making him the first world's self-righteous hipster. But wind power doesn't need to be restricted to powering a single cottage in the Scottish countryside. It can be turned into a practical and legitimate method of mass power through the construction of wind farms. Wind farms are groups of turbines clustered together in the same location to collect vast amounts of energy from a single area with a particularly strong wind current. These wind farms can be huge, with thousands of individual turbines working in synchrony. And the best thing is these things don't even have to be on land. We can build wind farms on otherwise unoccupied areas of the ocean where atmospheric currents are strongest, thus freeing up actually usable land for other activities. Agriculture, conservation areas, Starbucks, what better motivator to move a convenient, ecologically viable energy source than the promise of more pumpkin spice lattes? <laughs> One of the other advantages of wind power is that citizens in remote locations can get their own private access to it. Not just anyone can dig a coal mine in their backyard or frack for aisle under their driveway, but private wind turbines are accessible and affordable for small businesses, rural residents, or even suburban families. These miniature power plants can produce up to 50 kilowatts of electrical power, freeing more people from being dependent on diesel fuels or expensive hydroelectric power lines. Better yet, any of the energy not used up by the owners of a private turbine does not have to go to waste. It can be sold back to an electrical grid, providing additional electric power for everyone else and allowing a little bit more income for a potentially struggling isolated community. But with every advantage, there are of course some disadvantages. As you can imagine, it is pretty pricey to build an entire wind farm, and they need to be put in an area where there is a steady supply of wind. Not to forget, they do produce a fair share of noise, so there cannot be many people around. Don't go thinking it's all bad. Even with these cons, wind power is the fastest growing energy source in the world, and it plays an increasing role in the supply of our electricity. So what is stopping us from implementing a logical, efficient, and economically viable solution to our growing energy crisis? Well, like most of the world's parts of life, it stems from politics. There is an international and far-reaching lobby that fights against the implementation of green energy ideas and is funded primarily by fossil fuel companies. Internationally, governments respond by giving billions of dollars in subsidies to fossil fuel companies, with a recent estimate placing the subsidies at nearly $72 billion. This will simply perpetuates the use of environmentally dangerous sources of energy and prevents us from innovating anything that can replace them. If we truly want to save our planet by switching to a more sustainable method of energy production, we need to start petitioning and pestering our government officials to stop participating in this harmful cycle and to start listening to the scientists and engineers who are trying to avoid the ecological catastrophe by introducing a viable alternative powered by the very wind in our planet's atmosphere.